If you're considering a career within software engineering or you're just starting out in this field, well then this video is for you. I will share 5 things that I wish I knew before becoming a software engineer. These 5 things and especially the last one can hopefully help you prepare for your journey on becoming a software engineer. If you're considering a career within software development or you're already on the path to becoming a developer, well then make sure to hit subscribe. There's a lot of useful content that I have on the way that will help you on your journey to becoming a better developer and you don't want to miss out on valuable tips and advice that may help you succeed in your career. So with that out of the way, let's dive into these things I wish I knew before becoming a software engineer. So one thing that I wish I knew before I started learning to code was to focus on the fundamental concepts and not get too caught up with learning a certain programming language. It can be very overwhelming when you're starting out first learning to code. And it's so easy to get caught up on trying to decide which programming language you should learn first. You go to YouTube and you stumble across a video where someone says you should learn Java, but then you scroll down to the comments and everyone's saying go with Python. It can be overwhelming and you're not too sure where to start. However, the language itself is not the most important thing. Don't get me wrong, it is important, but the fundamentals are a lot more crucial. Once you have a strong understanding of the fundamental concepts, the programming language becomes a lot easier to pick up and understand. For example, when I first started learning to code in college, Java was the main programming language that we used. With Java, we learned the fundamentals from the ground up. We learned about things like variables, loops, data structures, classes, object-oriented programming, algorithms, and many more other fundamental concepts. After spending about two years with Java, learning these fundamental concepts, I was finally starting to get comfortable with it and I was liking the programming language. I was even getting to the stage where I was able to build out a few projects using it. But then all of a sudden, we were asked to build one of our Java projects using C Sharp. Now C Sharp was a language that I had no experience with. At first I thought to myself, seriously, I'm only after learning Java and I'm finally getting comfortable with it, now I'm expected to go and learn C Sharp. But in reality, it wasn't that big of a learning curve as they already had the fundamental concepts down. So it was more so of just looking up the syntax in C Sharp and seeing how it was done in that language. A lot of the knowledge and skills that I'd learned previously using Java were transferable across to many other programming languages. And having a strong understanding of the fundamental concepts made the process a lot easier. So with that being said, it would have been useful for me to know early on the importance of learning these concepts. And once you have these fundamental concepts down, the process of learning a whole new language becomes a lot easier. Now, so this brings me on to number two. Learning to code is like climbing a never ending mountain range. Let me explain. When we're learning to code, there's gonna be lots of ups and downs. When we are faced with a new challenge or we're learning a new concept, we're gonna be at the bottom of the mountain looking up. Let's say for example, we're starting off with Python and we're learning how to write our first class. We'll be at the bottom of the mountain looking up, thinking, how do I even write a class in Python? As you start writing your class, things may be going well at first. You create a class for a dog, you give it some properties and all is going well. You then move on to give the class some methods and all of a sudden you start getting stuck. You might not seem to understand what it is you're doing anymore. You might start to feel confused, defeated and frustrated. However, you do a bit more digging online and you come across a video that explains what it is you're doing wrong. So finally, with that solution, you implement the rest of your class and it works perfectly. Suddenly you feel a great sense of achievement and you're absolutely buzzing. You've reached the top of the mountain. But then comes your next challenge. The next thing you have to learn. Inheritance. And how classes relate to each other. So suddenly you have a new mountain in the distance that you must climb. So my point is that this will continue throughout your career. There are moments where you feel on top of the world and you're so confident that you know it all. But then there are also going to be moments when you feel like you know nothing again. This is all part of the learning and development process and you should learn to enjoy it. You should see it as a way to constantly be improving and learning new things. The third thing that I wish I knew before becoming a software engineer. So one thing that I wish I realized earlier on in my career is the experience and benefits that comes with being proactive and sometimes taking the most difficult challenge first. When we are learning to code or we're working with code, we often face challenges that may seem daunting. For example, say we're building out a web application for an online store. And we want the store's location to appear at the bottom of the web page so users know how to get there and where it is. We might consider just putting the store's location and coordinates as plain text at the bottom of a web page because we know that's the easy option and we can do this. However, we might have seen a previous online store that had a Google Map component at the bottom of their web page. And with this component, users have the ability to interact and find the store's location in a real GPS way. 
However, we've never worked with a Google Map component before and this challenge seems quite hard and we're not too sure if we can do it. However, I strongly believe that we should often opt for the most difficult challenges over the easier ones. This is mainly because the most difficult challenges help us stretch our abilities and learn the most. And even if we don't succeed, we can learn from our mistakes and grow from them. And in fact, I often find that my mistakes is where I learn the most. A difficult challenge where the implementation fails can often teach us more than a basic one that succeeds. This process of learning and achieving can also have a positive impact on our self-esteem and our confidence. Then, when opportunities present themselves further on down the line, we will feel more confident to take them on because we have learned to embrace difficult challenges and learn from our mistakes. So yeah, one thing that I wish I knew earlier on was to go for the difficult challenge more so than the easier one. So this brings me on to the fourth thing that I wish I knew. The need to always be learning and stay up to date with new technologies and tools. One thing to keep in mind when you're starting out in this field, and this is something that I didn't know when I started out, is that there is no end all be all. There is no point where you know information and you can just retain that information and you will be fine for the rest of your career. The field of software engineering is constantly changing all the time with new tools, technologies and programming languages always coming out. It is essential to always be learning and stay up to date with these new tools and technologies. This is to ensure you are better equipped to tackle new challenges and opportunities that may arise. In this field, you'll need to learn how to learn essentially, as you're going to be learning new things all the time. And you need to be willing to try new things and step away from what you know and what you're comfortable with in order to learn new trends and best practices. It's important to remember that there is no cruise control within software engineering and you need to be proactive in your learning and development in order to succeed and become a more versatile and valuable developer. For some people and including myself, when I first found out that I was always going to have to learn and stay up to date with new things, it was quite daunting and intimidating. However, after having now experienced this process firsthand, I've come to see this as a huge positive. It keeps things fresh and exciting and there is always room for growth and improvement. The constant need to learn is essential for a successful career in software engineering and I have found it to be both a rewarding and enjoyable process. And it's definitely one thing I wish I knew before I started out. Now, so the last and in my opinion the most important thing that I wish I knew before becoming a software engineer. The importance of developing good coding practices. As a software engineer, when I started working on a team writing code that would eventually reach production, the importance of this skill became very clear to me. No longer was I only writing code for projects that I worked on and only I would see, but now I was working within a team and other people were relying on my code and not just me. It was easy to see the importance of having good standards in place to make my code more readable, maintainable and adaptable to change if things were to change further on down the line. So, good coding practices include things like using clear and concise naming conventions to improve the readability of your code. Writing code that is self-explanatory and requires minimal commenting. Following established design patterns and conventions for writing code in a particular framework or programming language. And thoroughly testing your code. By developing good coding practices and writing clean code, we can improve the efficiency and reliability of our projects, as well as make them easier to maintain and update in the future. So in short, developing good coding practices is essential for any software engineer, as it helps to ensure that our code is of a high quality and is maintainable for the long run. It was only when I started looking into this a bit more, doing some research online and reading some programming books that I realized all the things that I was doing wrong and that I could change to improve my code. Overall, I wish I'd known the importance of developing good coding practices earlier on in my career, as it would have saved me a lot of time and effort in the long run. So with all that being said, I hope these five things can help provide some context as to what you can expect on your journey to becoming a software engineer. However, it is impossible to know everything before you start your journey and you're going to make some mistakes. But mistakes are opportunities for improvement. It is important to learn from them and only see them as ways to learn. If anyone else has any useful things that they wish they knew before they became a developer, then please do drop them below as I'd be very interested to hear. Thanks for watching and please do hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. I'll see you in the next one.